Mathematics, Ordinary Level, Paper 1, 2022, Part 6. Let's continue with Example 30. The mean height of six learners in a group is 1.8 meters. Nadava joined the group and the new mean height is now 1.75 meters. Calculate the height of Nadava. Now, you will find this in the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbook, grade 10 and 11, part 2, on page 662. There you will see about mean, mode, and this. But the mean is like the average. So you must first find what is that total. If I take 6 learners and I multiply it with, um, with 1.8, then I get 10.8. Okay. Now, if he joins the group, there's now not 6 learners anymore. There's 7. So, But now the new mean is 1.75. And that will be 12.8. Two, five. And now to see his height, I will take the 12.25 and I will subtract the 10.8. And I will get 1.45. That will be his height. Okay, really not, not difficult. Um, we can just maybe go to the exam report and just say what if they said how well it was answered. Uh, question 30. Um, let's just see, let's just make a bit bigger. Mm. So, oh, it's actually very poorly answered. Candidates multiply and divide the values at random. Many candidates also wrongly attempt to solve this question by using direct proportion. Very few candidates realize that they first had to calculate the sum of six lengths and then the sum of seven lengths like we did. Then they just had to subtract the two sums from each other and that was the height. Okay. Now we go back to the question paper. I hope I'm going to, now we're going to construction. And make sure you have construction, especially a compass. Okay, so we're going to do this question now. So using a ruler and compass, construct the bisector of angle BAC. Now I'm going to see um, if I can quickly do it for you with my uh, instruments. Uh, there's the compass. I'm taking it out. Okay, and now I just have to move it always. Okay, so do you see? But I have to first move it to that there, the, the pin. And then I have to make it a bit shorter. And then I can, yeah, I think I can move with it now. So basically, I'm just going to, and without stretching it, but just moving it to the other side, just rotating it. Not stretching, not keep your point where it was, don't move it. Okay, and then just there, then I'm going to just draw another line. And now I can move it. And now I can stretch it. Doesn't matter, you can do it now. Now I'm just going to change the color even. Uh, again, I'm just going to use this to see if I can just, before I use the pen, mine is a bit more challenging moving. Make sure you are on that dot there on that point and i just want to move before i okay and now i'm just going to do that and then after that i'm going to move it okay so basically and then i'm just going to move it okay and now i'm going to take that ruler which they said so move it that away and let's say find the ruler and I put it here, and again also I'm going to stretch it, put it like this, and put it here, put it there, and move it also a little bit. Okay. And now I'm just going to move it still a little bit to make sure you are, and move this on that point there and there. And then I will just take my rule, uh, my pen, you will do it with pencil. So then I will just take my pencil and I will just draw that line through that point and that point. And what did I do? I bisected that angle. Okay. And we can just go to the report and just say, I think sometimes it's a problem that some students is not having um, the instruments and that's actually very sad. 
And I hope that schools can just have sets and just hand it out and take it back. Make sure that everyone is able of do, doing this. So very poorly answered. Candidates, okay, this was question 31. Poorly answered. It seems as if many candidates were not taught constructions. It also seems as if they did not have mathematical instruments, which is really sad, to use in the examinations. Some candidates draw the angle bisector correctly without the, the pairs of arcs, which made them the gain, uh, only to gain uh, one mark only. So you must leave in the arcs. They actually just, it's a method of to see that you were working with a compass. So try to borrow one. Go around and try to borrow one, but make sure in the exams you have the instruments. Okay, and now um, I can go to the next question. Now, maybe we we're not done yet. Let's see if we're done. Okay, I can maybe just get rid of my instruments. Okay, so using, oh, we did that. So that is 100% correct. So we can just go, go around to the next page. And that's question number 32. Um, I can make it a little bit bigger. Luckily, this page is also not a lot of questions. So... The two cylinders are mathematically similar. Okay, so one is smaller, the one is bigger. The total surface area of the smaller cylinder is 240. Calculate the total surface area of the bigger um, cylinder. Now, you must go to, to similarity, and you will find that on page uh, 353 in part 1. Okay, um, and there is a very nice example that you can also check. 355, five, that's on try now. 6, and that was number 3. I think that example is also with the circles. Then they just gave you the diameters instead of the heights. Okay, that will also help you. Okay, so basically we start the total surface area of the smaller cylinder is 240. Calculate the total surface area of the bigger cylinder. Now, before, you must first get the ratio. Now, I get to say small over big. Doesn't actually matter as long as you just keep to it. Now, if you say small, that's 20. You must take the same sides, the similar sides, which is 20 and this one is 30. So, the ratio will be 2 over 3. But then the formula, and you will see it there on page 353, it's the area of the small over area of the big and now you will take the ratio and you will square it if it was volume you will cube it so basically so the area of the small they say is 240 and the area of the bigs like you can make it x now sometimes it would have been better to put the big in front uh, on top uh, but it, it's not going to have an influence okay because all that i'm going to do is i'm going to cross multiply and then I'm going to get 2160, if I say 9 times 240, and then I divide by 4, and I divide by 4, and I get that the value of x is 540. So, <coughs> sorry, and that is going to be 540 square centimeters. A very, very easy values to work with. Just make sure you know the basics. It's, it's again, when you prepare for the examination, the most important is that you conquer the basics before you go to a level up and go to exam type of questions. Okay, so basically we can just go back to the report and we can just check. Um, this was question 29. Uh, 30, oh, it's very nice. We're almost at the last page of this. So basically, um, question number 32, I can read extremely poorly answered. Very few candidates realized that they had to work with the scale factor a square as they are working with similar areas. Some candidates attempt to calculate the radius of the smaller cylinder first, but they wrongly only use the curved surface area in the calculations instead of the total surface area. Similar areas and similar volumes must receive more attention when similarity is taught in schools. And there's the 540, and there they showed you how to do it. Question number 33. The diagram shows a sector of a circle with center A 
and a radius of 18 centimeters. Angle BAC equals 20 degrees. Calculate the circumference of a circle, not the sector, a circle of radius 18 centimeter. So you will find a very nice picture in part 2 of the mathematics y equals mx plus c on page 504. Then you will see the sector uh, but there, on page 504, I think that's for more on page 505, you will just see the normal formula for the circumference of a circle. And that's 2 pi r. Not pi r squared, that's for area. 2 pi r. So you can either use pi, or as I said in front of the question paper, 3 comma 1 for 2. And then I just make sure it's the radius, otherwise you must divide it by 2, but it is the radius, so I multiply by 18 and then I just press it on my calculator and I'm going to say 2 multiply 3.142 multiply 18 and I'm getting oh sorry my calculator didn't want to work with me 142 multiply 18 and I get 113.112 so it's actually exact otherwise I can say so it's exact, so I'm going to leave it like this, 113.112. Or somebody could say, and I'm going to put it in blue, 2 multiply pi multiply 18, and it would just end with 36 pi. That would also be correct. That would be actually perfect, because that would be very, very exact, or on the dot. Okay, and then calculate the area of sector A, B, C. So, you will find this on page 505 to 508, if you go there for a sector. But that is actually so easy. It's just part of the circle. So, the area of a sector, you take the angle and you put it out of 360, because around the point is 360. And then you multiply with pi, or three, uh, let's keep to 3,142 now, and you multiply with 18 squared, I forgot to write the formula. For the formula of an area of a circle, the normal formula is pi r squared. And if there's an angle, then it's that angle times pi r squared. That's where I get that. Okay, so it's 20 divide 360 equals multiply 3.142, multiply 18, multiply 18 equals... And that would be equal to 56.556, okay? So, 56.556. Or, again, if you wrote um, pi there, and I'm going to make it blue again, so, or, you can say 20 over 360 times pi times 18 squared. So, it's 20 divided 360 times 18 squared equals, and that would have gave you 18 pi. Okay, so you could also wrote it there, which was, would have been the total exact answer. Okay, let's go to the examination report. Okay, so basically I'm 33. So, in this question, it was shocked that most candidates did not know the difference between the formula for a circumference of a circle and the area of a circle. It was often seen that the same formula was used in both questions. So, remember, circumference, it's 2 is on the ground, area 2 is in the air, it's an index. Okay, many candidates did not know the formula at all, okay, for the sector. So, um, Seeing the formula was used in both questions. Moderate answer, many candidates did not read the question properly and calculate the arc length instead of the circumference of a circle. So it was not the it was a full circle in the first question. Okay, so that was the answer. That if you approximate to three second percent, it was one one three. Okay. But if you worked with three comma one four two, it would have gave you an exact. Okay. And then it was a thirty six or thirty six pi. And then the next question, moderately answered, it was often seen that the area of a semicircle was calculated and not the required sector. Okay, so it was 56.5 if you, um, or that they made it better, or 
uh, 56.556 as we got or 18 pi as I showed you. Okay, so let's go on and I think this is going to be good news because that this is going to be the last question of the question paper. Okay, so let's do the last question. Okay, let's start with question 34. Triangle ABC has AB 4.5, AC 8, and BC equals 4. A is due to the south of B. That means it's a north-south line. This, this, can I just show you here? This is a north-south line. Okay, calculate angle ABC. A, A, B, C, this angle. So let's just mark this angle. Now, you will find, this is trigonometry, you will find it in the y equals mx plus c mathematics textbook, grade 10, 11, part 2. And you can look there on page 474, example 36. It's going to definitely help you. And this is one thing about trigonometry. It's almost like algebra. It's just methods that you have to conquer. And then it's usually quite straightforward. Okay, so just make sure that you work through the chapter, watch the videos, make sure you can do the sine rule, you can do the cosine rule, when to use the sine rule, when to use the cosine rule. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the cosine rule, but we are going to use the adjusted cosine rule so that if they give us three sides, we can work out an angle. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to say cos of angle A, B, C, and then I'm going to start by taking the sides around the angle. So it's going to be 4 squared plus 4.5 squared. Okay. And then the one opposite, I'm going to subtract 8 squared. And then I'm going to divide it, say 2, and then 4 times 4.5. The 2 that I was adding, I just multiply. Okay. Now I'm just going to take my calculator and I'm going to press it on my calculator. Now make sure your calculator is on D. D stands for degree. Because it could be that coincidentally you put it on R and that's radians and then your answer will be incorrect. Okay, so what I do on my calculator, but it's the old one. So I say mode, mode, and I press 1 and then I'm on degrees. Okay, so I start. I press shift and then I press cos. But now... Because there's so many things, there must be a bracket. Now, what I can do, I'm also going to put a bracket there, and I'm going to put a bracket there. So, just keep track of all your brackets. So, start with the big blue bracket. And then you say, 4 squared, and I square, I, I press this. And then you say, plus 4.5 squared. And then, minus 8 squared. And then you close that small blue bracket. And then you say divide. And then again that small blue bracket. And then you say 2 multiply 4 multiply 4.5. Close the small blue bracket. And then close the big blue bracket. And then press equal. And then you get on your calculator, and first, don't forget, you worked out the angle, not the ratio. If you just press this without the cost, you will get the ratio, but that would be unnecessary to write that down. So start with there. Then you get one, four, zero. Write your full calculator display. So don't forget, don't just say equal, write angle ABC because that is the angle. Okay, and now you can approximate it to one decimal place and say 140.4 degrees. Okay, angle A, B, C equals, and that's your answer. Okay, so please make sure on the calculator by putting in that brackets and then write the full calculator display and then as the question paper said in the beginning, correct it to one decimal place. Okay. And now, find the bearing of C from B. And bearings you will find on page 480. Okay. So, basically, I'm just going to go back and I want to say, find the bearing of B 
okay c from b so that's actually very nice it's that one now you worked out this one you got one for you can work with your one decimal place okay so you know that this is a straight line 180 so basically i'm just going to say i'm going to say 180 minus that 140.4 degrees and then i'm going to get 39.6 degrees and that will be your final answer and this is this is the end of question paper number um, one it was according to me not so difficult just know your basics okay from the next videos we will go to paper two as your final exams approach I want to highlight the importance of the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks. If you don't have them yet, you can find them at the following bookshops. These textbooks will be your reliable study companions, guiding you towards mathematical success. For educators aiming for exceptional maths exam results, start using the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks used by leading schools in your classroom. They are part of the NEET catalogue and can be easily obtained within your ministry's textbook budget. Make sure to communicate your request to your region's procurement department to empower your learners with the best educational resources. Furthermore, schools have the option to place direct orders with us and we offer bulk order discounts. Reach out to us via email at the address Below. Best of luck in your maths journey.